Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Reiterter, consultant audiologist and also director of Clearwax. Welcome to another demonstration video of our recently developed wax scope, which will be available to purchase from early autumn 2022. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about the wax scope and purchasing it once it's available, please feel free to email us at info at clearwax.co.uk and we shall add you on to our mailing list so we can keep you updated. Now, I feel this video for me is a perfect demonstration and illustration of why I developed the wax scope in the first instance. Um, now, as you may already be aware, Clearwax developed the iClearscope Endoscope back in 2015 or 16. I can't remember now, so it's been a few years. And if truth be told, nothing can compete with an endoscope. And um, I've got to be frank about that. And I think and the main reason for that is the field of view. Um, it's just uncomparable. It's unparalleled in terms of the visual, the optics. However, I also, must also be um, frank in that not everyone can use an endoscope. Um, it is a, a tr tricky skill to develop and, and it's through no fault of anyone who's tries to, who picks up an endoscope, but it does re require a high level of what we call bilateral integration, so coordination between both hands, because you're having to use the endoscope to stretch open the ear and also visualise the earwax, whilst also then using the other hand to insert the instrument and manipulate the earwax out of the ear. And some people just... Um, find that difficult to do. For myself um, it's just become so natural now and um, there was a bit of a learning curve like with anything but um, so if you are able to use uh, the eye clearscope, endoscope, uh, that would be um, for me it, there's nothing else that can compete against the, the, the eye clearscope in terms of full wax removal. Um, but before, um, what inspired me to develop the eye clearscope was I was originally trained in removing earwax using loops and this procedure is a very good um, procedure in terms of demonstrating and highlighting why I decided to uh, develop the eye clear scope after using the loops, because with loops, there's no way I'd be able to um, complete this procedure. Now, this patient has got a very narrow ear canal, so that's one of the first difficulties. Also, um, the, the wax is very deep in the ear. Now, I'm using the smaller specular. We've got different specular. This is the 3.5 millimeter. Now, I would never be able to remove anything like this using head loops. This is on the eardrum, um, and you'll see in a moment when I remove this crusted dead skin off the eardrum, it's going to reveal the handle of malleus, which is directly behind the skin here. There we are. And now you can see the handle of malleus. So that piece of keratin was on the eardrum itself, and now it's in full visual. There's also some wax there. You can see in the anterior um, superior quadrant, so almost in the anterior recess. And again, using a fine end and using the wax scope, I'm safely, without any um, cause for concern, able to insert the um, fine end into the ear and remove that from the anterior recess. There's not a chance that we'll be able to possibly even visualise the eardrum with um, we're using loops, never mind removing wax off the direct of the eardrum. Um, and it was interesting, the other day at the clinic, um, we had almost like a technology day. I had, um, we were comparing all the technology available in the market for earwax removal, so the eye clear scope and operating into microscope, a very good pair of loops and some other t technologies as well that's on the market at the moment. And um, so people that had some of these, I mean, I've got loops and I've got a microscope and um, some people that I know have got some other device and they brought that in. And I just gave them the demonstration of the, end, of the eye clear scope and the wax scope. And of course, the, <laughs> the endoscope, um, was in terms of optics it was unbelievable but by far um, everyone else felt the wax scope was head and shoulders above everything else in terms of wax removal um, because it's it's portable it's lightweight the view is stunning in terms of um, the magnification and clarity the focus is unbelievable um, the only thing that is different between the the wax scope and the endoscope is the field of view and I mean that's something that's unavoidable because the purpose of um, using um, the wax scope is um, the reason for de developing it to make it more user-friendly so it incorporates a speculum. So you're no longer having to use the endoscope to stretch the ear open, uh, which some people can find difficult. Instead, you're using a speculum. And as audiologist and any healthcare professional that um, is trained to look inside the ear, we've all, we all should know how to use a speculum. Now, 
Having saying that, it's not, it is a bit, um, it's still, um, you're learning to use the speculum to straighten the ear canal past the second bend, because that's the crucial bit, because you get some patients with very, very bendy ear canal, so there is a bit of um, a learning curve there still, but far less than uh, an endoscope. Um, now, I've got an ENT microscope, and yeah, the magnification's fantastic, and I was speaking to a prominent ENT consultant the other day, uh, Chris Colson and I've got another ENT colleague, very good friend of mine as well, Darius Rajali, and they all agree that uh, training people on a, uh, on a microscope uh, with binocular vision is uh, a difficult thing and uh, they've noticed that themselves during their careers when they're training their registrars and um, ENT nurses that some just really, really struggle. And that's because you're having to incorporate binocular vision, you're looking through two eyepieces and what the ENT microscope does, and um, some certain head loops, they artificially converge you into pupillary distance. So in order to have depth perception with binocular vision, you, should, you must be able to see an object with both eyes. Uh, in the case of the ear, the ear is very narrow. Um, the, the, distant, the ear canal diameter is less than our interpupillary distance, so the distance between our pupils. So there is obviously the microscope and some head loops artificially converge your interpupillary distance so you're able to see wax with both with both eyes now they both agree that when you're working really deep in the ear and especially in this kind of case when it's a narrow ear canal and you're looking at and you're removing wax with the eardrum that binocular vision kind of goes out the window because no matter how advanced the microscope is or uh, some certain loops they can't you just simply cannot converge the eye artificially close enough to be able to visualise um, the wax or dead skin off the eardrum. So, and uh, you can just see that the clarity we've got here, uh, the magnification's great. Uh, we're working on some enhancements of the app as well, where we're going to have a zoom function. Not that I think you need it, but um, it'll just be a good additional feature. Um, now, the speculum we'll be using, these are not our finished, but these are just our prototypes. Um, so they are getting injection moulded, so they're going to be high, obviously they're good already, but they're even going to be better. Um, uh, the, the prototypes, the thickness of the, um, the speculum is a bit thicker than it will be uh, with the real, uh, the final product. So even with this smaller speculum, which is the smallest one, 3.5, we're hoping that once we've got the final product that you're going to see actually see less of the speculum. Now with the 5 millimeter speculum, I did a procedure yesterday that I uploaded onto um, LinkedIn and Clear, uh, my Clearwax YouTube channel and also Facebook and Instagram. Um, we used a five millimeter speculum because the patient had a slightly larger ear canal and you just weren't able to see the speculum at all. It was completely out of view, which is great. Now, well, it was just see the slight room. Now, I like the idea of seeing some of the speculum because it just helps guide you in the ear. You, you kind of know where you are and you can almost use it as a guide to help focus the, the, the wax scope. Um, so this is, um, so we've cleared the outer part of the patient's ear canal. They had really thick crusted dead skin. Now, we're working medially, and again, a patient's got a really, really narrow ear, hence why we're using this um, 35 millimeter speculum, the smallest one. But I would not be able to remove this with, when I first got um, trained with head loops. So it's just not possible. It's too deep. It would have been all blurry. I wouldn't have got the view. I wouldn't have felt safe. But here, I'm in complete control. I feel completely at ease uh, removing this. And you'll see, again, similar to um, the left ear, the first ear, we're removing some dead crusted skin directly off the eardrum. Um, so again, just going to stretch the ear open. With the specular, we're now going to get uh, this crusted skin, which is on the eardrum, in focus. I think I'm using a standard Zolna at the moment. And we're just slowly removing that away. And you can see some of the posterior aspect of the uh, tympanic membrane that's now visible. Now, no doubt the patient's hearing would be significantly improved already, because the, the main bulk of the occlusion's gone. But we're just going to try and remove a bit more now. Just to help with the visuals, I'm just removing some dead skin. More laterally, this is more near uh, the cartilaginous portion. But I just wanted to remove that just to improve the bit of the view deeper in the ear. And adjusting the focus is so easy. Um, it's just literally, as, as you're in the ear, uh, on the app, it's, it's a slider that we're going to have. And you just get up and down and... It takes moments now. That is one of the other things I found really difficult with head loops and even a microscope. Because, I mean, for me, it took a while to develop the skills with a microscope as well, because that binocular vision. 
Um, but the thing that I really struggled was the focus. I would lose the focus so easily with both if the patient moved or with a microscope, it's more so if the patient moved or if you're having to uh, manipulate the microscope to visualize a different part of the ear, it's very hard to, you have to keep getting it in focus. Now the wax scope is so much easier. You just put the speculum in and then you just adjust the focus with, with, your, with your finger. With the loops, it was, it, was a, it was double whammy because not only the, the patient moves or you're having to move um, if you're removing wax from a different part of the ear but when you're coming out of the ear to remove wax of the speck of the sucker like I was there you're then having to readjust your head position again so it took a lot longer so again you can see we've removed some dead keratin now we're using the fine end there you can see it's a lot thinner and it's all in focus as well I noticed with some other um, technologies that um, I was trialing the, the other week is that when this the suction probe goes in and I'll come back to that because this, this is again right on the eardrum So we've got a good line of view, got it in focus, just going in with the fine end. We just took that directly off the eardrum. Yeah, what I noticed with some other technologies is like when the instrument's in the ear, it no longer looked, it was all dark and it was all black in appearance. It was covering half the screen. It looked distorted, the suction. It did not look like a suction pair, but it was like a zigzag. Uh, it, I, yeah, it was just a bit, con and that again was another reason why I really pushed the development of the Waxcape in the last, uh, in, in the in the last year or so. Is that I definitely feel this needs needs to be a, a a really good alternative to the endoscope, um, and I think here we are. I'm really really confident in this um, technology and um, in what we've managed to develop here, and it has taken a long time. Um, there was many obstacles that we had to overcome. Um, in terms of weight, this is extremely. Um, extremely um, lightweight um, it, it's, it can be compared to other technologies out there um, the way it's being held as well helps because you're resting some of the weight on um, your hand is it's going to be held horizontal although you can use you can hold it in whichever way you want you're not limited but um, through uh, practice I felt using it horizontally more like a otoscopic brace will help you can see we just got this dead keratin now we could leave this but like I said I felt comfortable removing it was no um, I didn't feel uneasy at all and I'm just trying to get as much out as we can there you can see some dead skin I've got a, a few more videos um, with the wax scope that I'll upload now it's been a bit more challenging because a lot of the if you're a YouTube viewer watching this um, I, I can understand it's not the best viewing um, pleasure for subscribers because the view is different but um, I'm also uploading normal videos for my YouTube fans um, with using the iClearscape. So I'm doing kind of double the work now. So these videos, by all means, if subscribers want to watch, brilliant. And um, many, many understand the benefits and they, they actually enjoy the view because it's so magnified and clear. But I know some prefer the iClearscape. So uh, if you're watching this um, and you prefer the iClearscape, we've got a whole dedicated YouTube channel, um, The Wax Whisperer or Type in the Hair Clinic. And um, on that, I'm trying to upload more, just more exclusively iClearscape videos. Again, right near the eardrum there. Removes some flake of dry skin. I'm going to have a view of the eardrum in a moment. And it's slightly tympanosclerotic. We're going to get it in focus. There we are. So it's slightly opaque. We, you can see everything around you. I mean, that was another thing that I had to get used to when not using the, uh, the endoscope. Because in the endoscope, you put the endoscope in. And you don't have to manoeuvre the endoscope too much. Uh, but with a microscope, whether it's ENT or the wax scope or head loops, you do have to manip manipulate the speculum in the ear to use different parts of the ear. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you are interested in purchasing the wax scope, please email info at clearwax.co.uk. Thank you.